It is Saturday night. Well, Sunday morning, maybe. Uh, but this is the Double Down Degenerates, another episode, episode number 21. Uh, this will be just the NFL games tomorrow. We had Thursday's college, Friday's college, and Saturday's college just wrap up with Alabama beating Oklahoma 45-31. to And we also had Notre Dame defeat, or I'm sorry, we had Clemson defeat Notre Dame 30-3 to for the national championship to be what it was supposed to be. Alabama versus Clemson should be a fun game to watch. Can't wait to see what the spread is on that one. I would say seven, seven to ten. Alabama, big favorite. Trevor Lawrence, that's gonna be a pretty big stage for a guy. You know, Trevor Lawrence against that Alabama defense, which Kyler Murray kind of did pretty well against. Uh, he, you know, obviously they didn't win the game, and the game was pretty much over after the first quarter, points wise, because Alabama I think was up twenty eight to nothing. And in watching these games, these two games. It still doesn't make the college football playoff good. I, in my heart, I love it, but you had both the Notre Dame and Oklahoma lose by double digits. And in the 10 games that have happened in the college football playoff, nine of them, the team was defeated by double digit points. It just shows that number one and number two sometimes are that much better than number three and number four and so on. Um, you know, the one that really, 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 really makes the college football good, the college football playoff good, was Georgia versus Oklahoma. But what made it even better was Ohio State defeating two teams that were ranked above them to win the national championship in the first ever college football playoff. So, you know, sometimes... You're just going to have people that are naysayers and say it's not good for the sport. I honestly think it needs to be changed to an eight-team format because Notre Dame shouldn't have been in there because they just aren't that good. And it's just they're they're just not that good. They're recruiting. They can't recruit guys like, you know, Clemson have and Alabama has and even so much as Oklahoma has. They can't do it. And I think a team like that needs not to be in there as four teams, they should be in there, including in eight teams, because Ohio State or Georgia would have given a better game to both Clemson and Alabama, but they weren't good enough in the end. Hopefully that next year there won't be any drama, and we'll see what happens in the national championship. So, like I said, we are into the NFL games here. Episode number 21 of the Double Down Degenerates, please Thank you, and thank you, and thank you for watching. You can also help us out by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, hitting the little bell on the side to get a notification that we have uploaded another video. It's the holidays, and you know what? It's tough to get people here. So, Bradder and Corey will be back after the new year. Um, I am going to have another video on Monday afternoon, so I'm not going to say Happy New Year just yet, but hopefully... We can ring in the new year with some winning because Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I'm not going to lie, the Big Tuna did not do great. Went 500, 4 and 4, but did not do fantastic. If this is your first time watching, what I try to do is simplify it for everyone out there, and I give the one stat of why I played this game. And this week, being week 17, it's tough to handicap because. You know, teams might be resting players, and some teams might not be playing hard. Some teams want to play spoiler. So I tried to get all the games in that meant something. I picked five games, and this is what I think has some sort of... Uh, you know, I, ju I just think that besides the first game that I'm doing... The rest of them have playoff implications because I have the Jags and the Texans and I just think the Texans might rest players, but I, I do think it still means something to them. I have the Eagles and the Redskins, which means something. I have the Bengals and the Steelers, which means something. I have the Cardinals and the Seahawks, which means something. And then I have the, Colt and the, the Colts and the Titans, which 
is a winner get in kind of scenario. So I don't want to get into the million scenarios here and all that. I'm just going to talk about the game, talk about the one stat that made me pick what I'm going to pick, and we are going to go from there. So like I said, the first game that I'm looking at here is the Jaguars at the Texans. The Texans are a seven-point favorite, and I think they would be more if they were playing in a different week. But at seven points... I honestly went with rushing offense here. The Texans are averaging 138 rushing yards at home, which is good for fifth in the league. And the Jaguars are allowing 145.71 rushing yards per game, which is good for 29th. How far have the Jaguars fallen from that great defense that they had last year? I am going to play the Texans. I think they're going to run the ball. And they're going to control the clock, and it's going to be over. I will take them at minus 7. Next is the, once again, Desperate Eagles. Another week with Nick Foles, and they are going to be going into Washington, D.C. to play the Redskins. They are a 7-point favorite here, but I honestly just went with how the Eagles do away from home scoring-wise. The Eagles rank 12th in the league with 23.14 points per game on the road. And the Redskins allow... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the Redskins are scoring 19.14 points per game at home. So you've got the 12th best scoring offense against the 27th best scoring offense. That Redskins defense is pretty good, but so is that Eagles defense. So I'm going to take the Eagles at minus 7. They're playing for everything here. The Redskins are no longer playing for anything. Uh, you know, the Eagles are playing like last year with Foles, and Josh Johnson is just not going to beat the Eagles here, I don't think. So, yeah, I'm going to take the Eagles at minus 7. Next, we've got the Bengals at the Steelers. The Bengals are a 14.5 point favorite. In this one, I looked at scoring defense and scoring offense when it comes to this game, and I pretty much went with the Steelers 30, scoring 32 points per game at home, which is fifth in the league. The Bengals are very bad on defense scoring-wise, and they're allowing 30.14 points per game on the road, which is good for 28th in the league. I just think that the Steelers need this game. They're really, 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 really going to try this game. Antonio Brown might not play if he doesn't, I just think still the Steelers are 15 points better than the Bengals. And they're actually playing some good football right now. If it wasn't for a fumble, they might have beaten the Saints. And that passing attack is very, very scary for a lot of defenses. And I know that the Bengals do not have a good pass defense. I'm going to take the Steelers at 14.5 points. Just bad defense on the Bengals' side. And, you know, Steelers need this thing to have a chance to make it in the playoffs. Next game I've got here is the Cardinals at the Seahawks. The Seahawks are a 13-point favorite here. And you know what? It's going to be in Seattle. And I just went from looking at both teams' offense from the Cardinals on the road and Seattle at home because it seems like it makes a little bit, for, little bit of a difference for each team, mainly how bad the Cardinals are scoring at on the road. They are last in scoring, they are last in passing yards, and they are second to last with rush offense. So that's bad. The Seahawks at home are sixth scoring, 27th passing, but first running the ball. You've got Carson, you've got Rashad Penny, pending any injuries, run the ball, control the clock, and make some plays off that play action. And trust me, the Seahawks will at least win by 14 points here. I really think so. Finally, I have the Colts at the Titans. The Colts are a three-point favorite. I didn't give any stat here. I pretty much am going off momentum. And the Colts have won eight of their last nine games. The Colts defeated the Titans 38-10 to in Week 11 at Indianapolis. And the Colts are 17-3 and straight up the last 20 meetings they've had versus the Titans. So, tough week to handicap everything in the NFL. We will be back with another episode, the 22nd episode of the Double Down Degenerates, either Monday morning or Sunday night when it comes to the New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and a couple other bowl games. Hopefully, we'll have Corey back next week so we can talk about the NFL playoffs and the national championship. A lot of fun going into next week but right now we're going to try to win some money week 17 of the nfl 
do us all a favor. First of all, thank you so much for watching. Second of all, please like the video. Please comment below. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell thing so that you'll get a notification for every single upload that we do. You can check us out on Instagram as well, Bigger and Brighter Sports, one word. And you know what, guys? Good luck. Bring it home. Bring it home. Good luck. And to quote Cousin Sal from the... Um, Oh my god, I can't remember his fucking, what the name of his podcast is. Jesus, I feel bad. I'm sorry about that, Cousin Sal, but he always says at the end, good gambling. So good luck and good gambling. We'll see you guys tomorrow night.